India's Press Information Bureau has issued a release saying that Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address the 77th on the 15th of August. He will unfurl the national flag and deliver the customary address to the nation from the ramparts of the historic monument. This year's Independence Day will culminate the Azad ka um, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav celebrations which were launched by the Prime Minister in 2021. A number of new initiatives have been taken to celebrate the 77th Independence Day and a large number of guests have been invited as compared to last year. Schools reopened in India's northeastern state of Manipur as the region slowly inches back to normalcy after sectarian violence. Students and teachers expressed their excitement over the reopening of schools and appealed for peace in the region. Local markets and streets also witnessed an increase in footfall. Deloitte resigned as auditors of Adani Ports and SEZ on Saturday. A source told Reuters that on Friday that Deloitte would resign because of issues with certain transactions raised by Hindenburg. And that the Indian business denied the auditor's recommendation to bring in a third party to investigate those transactions. Adani Ports, a statutory filing, in a filing, said that the reasons Deloitte gave for resigning were not convincing for sufficient or sufficient to warrant such a move and the international audit firm had access to all the data it needed to complete the audit. Adani Ports said Deloitte was worried they didn't have a bigger part in the auditing other than listed Adani companies. Tens of thousands of Israelis continued to protest in Tel Aviv on Saturday for the 32nd week in a row. The protests are against the governing coalition's planned judicial overhaul, which would see the highest court stripped of much of its powers. Critics of the government's judicial overhaul see the Supreme Court as the last check on an executive. Supporters of the legislation say it restores balance to the branches of the government. The planned judicial overhaul has sparked national protests and criticism at home and abroad. The assassination of Ecuadorian presidential candidate Fernando Fernando Vencio continues to rock the pole-bound nation. Via Vicencio's wife addressed a news conference and alleged that the Ecuadorian government was responsible for her husband's murder. Meanwhile, Via Vicencio's political party has announced a replacement for his post. The Build Party's erstwhile vice presidential choice, Andrea Gonzalez, is slated to be the new presidential candidate for the August 20th elections. The Ecuadorian government has imposed a state of emergency across the nation. 4,000 Ecuadorian military and police officers entered a prison in search of a powerful gang leader accused of threatening Via Vicencio. Via Vicencio had complained of receiving death threats from Jose Adolfo Macias, alias Fito. The Ecuadorian government has now moved Fito from a zonal penitentiary 
in the major port of Guayaquil to La Roca prison. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu surveyed military infrastructure to gauge the readiness of Russian forces for Arctic combat, including the defense of critical Russian facilities in the region. Accompanying Shoigu was Alexei Likachev, the head of Rosatom, both of whom visited facilities in Novaya Zemlya in northern Russia. Shoigu and Likachev also inspected the Soviet-era nuclear test sites in the vicinity. The Russian Defense Minister hinted at ongoing advanced tests but refrained from sharing further details. Shoigu also confirmed that the Russian military has rehabilitated the Soviet-era bases in the area including the deployment of the S-400 platform. Republican presidential rivals Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis held competing events in the early nominating state of Iowa on Saturday. The former president continues to overwhelmingly dominate opinion polls. The Florida government is scrambling to reset his troubled campaign. Iowa holds the first of the state-by-state -state Republican nominating contests on January 15. DeSantis hopes that a win in the Midwestern state will give him valuable momentum against Trump before primaries in New Hampshire and South Carolina. Video footage shared on social media showed flames and thick smoke rising from a house after it exploded in Pennsylvania's plum on Saturday. Local media reported that one person died after the apparent explosion, which destroyed at least three nearby homes and damaged several others. Local authorities said rescuers found people trapped under debris and three people were transported to hospitals. Crowds of protesters in Germany took to the streets of Dortmund to demonstrate against racism and police brutality on Saturday. The crowds were marking the death of a Senegalese teenager who died after being shot in the German city last year. Police shot at the 16-year-old refugee after he ran towards them with a knife. The incident sparked a debate in Germany about police violence against minorities and their handling of cases involving people with mental illnesses. China launched a land exploration satellite into a preset orbit from the Xichang Satellite Launch Center in the southwestern province of Sichuan. A Long March 3B rocket carried the satellite into space. The satellite is mainly used to provide remote sensing information services. The launch was the 483rd mission of the Long March rocket series. On the other hand, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi met with Cambodian Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister-designate Sok Chenda Sophia on Saturday. During the meeting, both the sides pledged to boost bilateral ties. Sophia also said that Wang's visit is the most timely and powerful support for Cambodia. The Deputy Prime Minister also said that Cambodia looks forward to working with China to continuously 
enhance the, strate the strategic nature of Cambodia-China relations. Poland is planning to move up to 10,000 additional troops to its border with Belarus. On Thursday, Defence Minister Mariusz Blazak said that the deployment intends to support the border guard. In a radio interview, the Defence Minister also said that 4,000 troops will directly support the border guard and 6,000 will be in reserve. Warsaw's proactive troop deployment follows multiple aggressions from its neighboring Russian ally. On another side of the world, Argentina is set to go to primary polls on Sunday ahead of general elections due in October. These elections are essential to know who will take over an economy neck deep in inflation? The country has a rank choice format of elections where people will vote for their favorite among 22 potential presidential candidates. The results will determine which parties and which of the candidates will contest the general elections scheduled for October this year. Feeling around the elections uh, remains grim as the Latin American giant is gripped by deep economic malaise fueled by years of debt defaults, currency crises and hyperinflation. Taiwan's Vice President William Lai arrived in New York late on Saturday on a layover for his Paraguay visit. The Chinese Foreign Ministry condemned his arrival in the United States and called him a separatist. Lai's trip to Paraguay includes two layovers, one at New York and the other one at San Francisco on Wednesday. The Chinese Foreign Ministry denounced Lai's visit and issued a statement saying that resolute and vigorous measures will be taken to defend national sovereignty and territorial integrity. Taiwan believes that China is likely to launch military drills this week near Taiwan. Dozens of political groups on the island of Taiwan rallied on Taipei's streets, strongly protesting against William Lai for his planned transit through the United States over the weekend. Groups in Taiwan have come onto the streets to protest against possible foreign interference. They alleged that the vice president will lead Taiwan to a war if he is allowed to collaborate with the United States. Russia and Ukraine issued briefings regarding their progress on the war front. Russia said that its forces have hit a Ukrainian military airport and repelled attacks in several directions. Moscow repelled Ukrainian attacks in directions of Kupiansk, Krasny Liman and Donetsk. The Russian air defense troops also intercepted multiple drones from Ukraine. Meanwhile, Ukraine claimed its forces have launched multiple airstrikes and shelling on Russian targets. The Ukrainian army repels the Russian army's attacks in the directions of Melitopol and Berdyansk. Kyiv launched multiple airstrikes on the positions of Russian personnel and equipment and also attacked Russian air defense missile systems.
Malaysia's ruling coalition has retained control of three states in regional elections. 570 candidates from nine parties competed for 245 state assembly seats across six Malaysian states. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim's alliance was pitted against Perikatan National, a conservative opposition bloc which is popular amongst the country's majority ethnic Malay Muslims. Malaysia's election commission showed that Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim's coalition has been re-elected in three states it held prior to Saturday's vote. These states include Selangor, the nation's wealthiest state which surrounds the capital of Kuala Lumpur. Authorities in Northeast China's province called carried out flood prevention works on Sunday. The works follow after the river water levels in the area spiked above warning levels. In villages downstream from the Songhua River, soldiers and rescue forces reinforced a dam to prevent flood damage. Local authorities have sent personnel to patrol the embankment and the river. Meanwhile, Typhoon Kanun brings flooding to Russia's far east. Having re heavy rains from Typhoon Kanun flooded Russia's far eastern region of Primorsky Krai. Nearly 5,000 buildings had been flooded in the region, which borders China and North Korea. Local authorities evacuated 2,000 people and accommodated them in temporary shelters. Rescuers have set up 13 temporary accommodation centers in the region. Also tens of thousands of people thronged to India's southern Kerala state to see the 69th edition of the iconic Nehru Trophy boat race on Saturday. The event is named after Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India. Various boat rowers were seen vigorously rowing their boats to the finish line in order to clinch the coveted title. 70 boats participated in the event. The annual event is held every August and draws thousands of local and foreign spectators who come to see the participants rowing long snake-shaped boats in the water body. The city centre of Prague was filled with a colourful pride parade on Saturday. Members of the LGBTQ community in the Czech Republic turned out to celebrate pride. Allies came out to celebrate with those who shared the same struggle. struggles demanded for people of all sexualities to start a family of their own. Polls show around 60% of Czechs support legalizing marriage for same-sex couples. A bill to legalize same-sex marriages has been making its way through the legislative stages in the Czech parliament.